guys. What's up? So this is our Melbourne top 10. So we're going to show you top 10 things to do in the city of Melbourne. Uh, what to eat, where to go to shop, uh, what to see, all of that. So this is the Queen Victoria Market, also known as Vic Market. It's the largest open-air market in the Southern Hemisphere. It's best visited in the mornings on the weekend. We went on a Sunday and it was fab. There are hundreds of stalls where you can find everything from souvenirs to beautiful fresh veggies and fruits, lots of art, local fashion, home decor, and even jewelry. So Web have got a thumb ring and I got myself a bracelet, both personalized. Make sure you have at least a couple of hours to explore the whole market because it's massive and it's totally worth it. Next up is a place that sells the best croissants in the world, allegedly. This is Loon, a croissanterie, which is the brainchild of a woman who used to design F1 race cars for a living. Be prepared to stand in a line for at least half an hour before you can taste the best croissant in the world. And remember, they run out pretty fast. Now this was one of my favorite experiences in Melbourne. Go Boat is an electric picnic boat which you can hire to cruise around Melbourne's famous Yarra River. It is so much fun to be able to captain your own boat and as you can see, Skipper Talwar had a great time. And I loved our little wine and cheese picnic along with the unmatched views of the city. These are the world famous bathing boxes at Brighton Beach. What these are essentially are just changing rooms, albeit very artistic and colourful. They are over a hundred years old and they haven't changed a bit in that time, except for maybe a fresh paint job. And obviously, they make for a great photo and are highly Instagrammable. This was hands down our best meal in Melbourne. Gimlet is the only Aussie restaurant to make it to the world's top 100 restaurant long list for 2022. We had a luxurious three hour long lunch here. Everything was fantastic. My favorite being the lobster with saffron rice. If you're looking for a fine dining experience in Melbourne, then this is your best bet. But make sure to book a table way in advance. Shopping is obviously one of the most fun things to do when one travels. And here in Melbourne, there is no place better for shopping than Chadston, which is Australia's largest shopping centre. It is about 25 minutes from the CBD and is very accessible. You can get designer brands, high fashion brands and everything in between. Sherry went nuts buying things here, but I actually did out shop her for once. Next up, Federation Square or Fed Square as the locals call it. This is in the heart of the CBD and is the place for arts, culture, concerts and live music. The famous giant screen here is where people gather to watch the big games, speeches and lots more. There are lovely cafes and restaurants all around and this is right opposite the beautiful Flinders Street Station. My favorite meal in Melbourne was at this restaurant called Big Esso, which is an indigenous owned and run restaurant that serves some really interesting native dishes. We got a little adventurous and ordered the crocodile that they serve. It was yum and kind of tasted like chicken popcorn. If you want to try something different and be adventurous, make sure to eat here. The 
best way to see Melbourne's signature lanes like the ACDC lane or the Hosier lane or their famous arcades is on a walking tour. The CBD area is full of beautiful street art and it's worth spending a couple of hours exploring this. We walk through the famous arcades experiencing the rich history of the city. If you're going to do one guided tour in Melbourne, this is the one we'd recommend. Melbourne should be named the coffee capital of the world, according to me. There is a cafe every 10 meters in the city and they all serve beautiful coffee. But for me, the best coffee is at Cafe Brother Baba Budan. It is a small hole in the wall kind of place uh, with a waiting line outside. Sherry and I went nuts drinking coffee on our trip and we both agreed on this being the best that we had. So guys, those were our top 10 recommendations in Melbourne. And we also have a huge vlog, a two-part vlog on my channel of our whole trip. So check it out. Thank you for watching. See you.